This is Lima Dunbar for iTunes Entertainment Magazine, the ladies' chat room, and G Smooth Multimedia TV. And I tell you something, if you all don't know, then you're living under a rock. Because this, <laughs> this is Miss Lisa Wickham. She is a TV producer. She is also the morning show, the host for the morning show now. And producer, you see, and producer. And the way I look at it, you were the one that brought back Trinidad and Tobago television. Don't say that, Lima. It's a team effort. It's a team effort. I think what happened is that because I literally grew up on television in Trinidad and Tobago, when TTT rebranded and the idea came to make me the face of the morning show, people were like, oh my gosh, this is the face that we know. Someone actually came up to me and said, this reminds me of my childhood and of a time when, you know, life was so innocent and that uh, I literally found that people welcomed it and I also welcomed the opportunity to be back in the place that gave me my birth and my start. So, you know, taking the morning show in a different direction, I like to say it's a bit of good morning America meets Ellen, <laughs> you know, sort of bringing that positive start to your day and the public really loves it and, and I'm happy to do it as well. And the different dynamics, so the different, um, I should say, factors and dynamics that make up the make up the morning show yes. makes it what it is and she said don't say that Lima but I did okay <laughs> you are yeah. responsible for the resurgence well, of Trinidad Tobago television I thank I, you and I'm very humbled by that but I know that there's a strong team that was backing me and also I like to say that TTT represents uh, intergenerational intelligences uh -huh. right so you have people who love the nostalgic idea of TTT but you also have the younger ones who are learning it for the first time and loving it the way it's being presented the Millennials the generation Z's and the little children you know so I think it's wonderful that we can take the experiences from both ends of the pole and pull them together and let TTT be exactly what it is the state owned media that belongs to each and every one of us you grew up on TTT I, I grew up on TTT you know it really belongs to everyone of Trinidad and Tobago and the diaspora so now we're in Miami and I'm going through Panorama and people are like oh my gosh I look at you guys every morning and they're in Pembroke Pines or they're in Fort Lauderdale you know and I understand in London they're looking and when we check the Facebook page they're looking all over the world South Africa even as far as uh, Japan and Thailand you know and we're making new friends around the world friends of the diaspora so I think it's wonderful to have this opportunity now to be able to be part of TTT not just as a local station but as an international platform for showcasing Trinidad and Tobago to the rest of the world so thank you for redirecting me so this is the first time um, you guys are, I should say TTT is here in Miami for that's Miami right. Carnival. That's absolutely right and uh, one of the things that I like about this is that we are now we are meant to be the home of Carnival and I think we need to be properly positioned in as many carnivals as possible um, but it starts here and we're very happy to be part of Miami Carnival 2019. So of course you would know that I would have been here many years ago as part of E-Zone right my, t my television program and I'm fascinated by what I saw back then because it was just just what around 2002 when there were two carnivals right and I don't know which one I think it was Miami and it was just one like 20 by 20 stage and everybody's jumping up around the stage in a park look at what it has become has now evolved, yes. right panorama juve and today now we're in this massive park with multiple vendors multiple stages mm -hmm. It's fascinating and it just goes to show what Trinidad and Tobago could produce more than a hundred carnivals around the world and this is just one of them that's you know that's doing very well right now. So yesterday we had an interview with the Madam President of Tr Pan Trinbago yeah. and Madam Secretary and it was I didn't realize or I learned yesterday that they're the first female yeah, to the yes. very well. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like helping them to get out that information to the yeah. diaspora as yeah. far as the panorama community yeah. around the United States and, and London. So yeah. do you want our help as far as... Um, <laughs> what am I? The first what? I am the first of many and many spheres and that's, that's one of the things that I, um, I always pride myself on. I love to be pioneering. I think this is the first time that Miami Carnival is being broadcast live back to Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, Fingers crossed that it works and even if it doesn't, we record it, we show it back. You know, but but certainly that first um, first major film production in Trinidad being home again in terms of the footprint over a thousand extras alone, 200 cast and crew. And the budget was about, uh, for Trinidad and Tobago, 1.4 million years, which is a lot, right? I mean, Hollywood would say, ah, that's just catering 
Hannah. That's just uh, Hannah, she's catering budget. in the bucket. Yeah, but for us in the Caribbean, that's a tremendous. The entire budget being like about four million, and then spend. And the footprint of that and the multiplier effect tremendous, and just growing the industry. So many people being able to jump off now and start their own careers in film from that production, and just continuing. And it's just a lot of firsts, many firsts, many many firsts. Yeah. So, question. I know. I think you have another film coming up that you're currently putting together. What is it? And no, actually, I have a film that's doing a circuit. So I'm the executive producer on the Francis Anne Solomon directed yes. film Hero, yes. uh -huh. right? Which we premiered at the uh, Trinidad and Tobago, but well, many Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival in 2018. And now I can say that it's on a 50 screening tour of the United Kingdom. We got four stars out of five from the London Financial Times, four out of five from the Evening Standard in London, the Guardian UK, three out of five. But brilliant write-up, Telegraph, brilliant write-up, so it's just doing very well. It's been to the US, we're going to be premiering it again in Trinidad and Tobago, red carpet style, on May 26th of 2020, and then rolling that out. And um, and yeah, I, I want to take it to Ghana in March, because we filmed in Ghana, and with a number of top Ghanaian actors. We also have people like Joseph Marcel from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air there, Jimmy Akimbola from Law & Order UK, and uh, Nikolai Salcedo, who is like this top, young, upcoming actor who's got so many roles I've since heard, then. I've heard of him and also what about that that young cat that played um, the Winston Duke oh, from the Black right, Panther? So, no, Winston is not in it but we love Winston because you know both he and Francis and Solomon were accepted into the Academy to as members of the Oscars so we love you Winston want to work with you <laughs> just putting that out there <laughs> and um, and and you know but hero itself speaks about a young man from Trinidad Tobago Ulrich Cross who was uh, arguably the most decorated RAF fighter pilot in World War II which is known people know that what they didn't know is his role in the pan-africanism so he was this lawyer and not and working on the BBC and Kwame and Krumer first president of Ghana says what are you doing here and he says well I can't get any jobs he said well you need to come with me to Africa and that started his journey and that's what the film is about you know so he's worked with Ghana and Cameroon back in those days and this film tells of his story and tells us as West Indian people people of the diaspora that we need to be proud of people like him and I think that's why it's resonating so well with audiences around the world because it's an ordinary guy from an ordinary home who has who went on very quietly to make a difference in the world and it's from the Caribbean I'm listening to you and I'm connecting what you're saying to we just did an interview recently with um, Alison Hines and she's also filming uh, doing a well in the process of making a movie yeah. and the filming segments of it in Ghana it's all about going home going back yeah, Ghana is beautiful. Ghana, I think people from the Caribbean definitely came from Ghana. When I went there, I felt so familiar. Beautiful country. And um, and yes, I think people, not many people realize how many connections we have with Ghana. A lot of people have been there doing work uh, in the vineyards uh, with carnival, with education, with law, you know, so many different areas. So yes, I think I'm not surprised that um, Alison is there as well. This is a, 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 I'm enjoying this conversation, but the sun is kind of hot. Yeah, and um, so, and yeah, she's wearing black. She's a brave woman. <laughs> so we're going to wrap it up. So I really, really ap appreciate you taking this time to meet oh, with us. Lima. Lima, you know I'm a fan of yours. I, am. I didn't know that. But I am. I follow you on Facebook. I loved you way, way, way back when. And I still love you now. And I appreciate the work that you're doing out here in the diaspora. Well, I appreciate that you appreciate me the same way I appreciate <laughs> you. We're loving up each other right now. <laughs> so we're going to say goodbye. And <laughs> this is me. Right. This is what I do every morning. And listen, <laughs> y'all really need to pay attention to who and what we have as Trinbeek audience because we've got some dynamic talent. And, and she's just appreciator. Oh, thank you very much, world. So we're gone. <laughs>